hello 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 my dear friends this is vivek badad your friend co-founder of stock edge dealer markets welcome to yet another face to face global and this is another going to be awesome awesome interaction so i'm not going to spend too much time about me and the series i'm going to straight away get into and start discussing with my guest for the evening michael cowell michael hello hey thanks for having me thanks a lot for um, accepting this invitation and uh, i've been following you on twitter you have written an incredible book so i'm going to i'm sure we are going to have great learning journey with you for coming 45 minutes to an hour so michael the format of this is that you know i i generally talk about the person first so i allow you to speak about yourself because we really want to know you as a person and then we get into the uh, conceptual discussion and because you have such a beautiful macro perspective about markets i would straight away get into macros and then we take the discussion forward th- from there so michael i we need to know more about you what would you like to know what's the first question the first thing you want to know uh the first question is that where are you from where, which, what's your native country I am from America. I grew up uh, near Washington DC in the state of Virginia. Oh and, nice. Uh, yeah, my in my early teens, all I loved to do is play baseball, American baseball. So, I've never played cricket, but I've always wanted to try. All right. So, I will invite you to India very soon and we'll have a good round of sessions, cricket sessions with you. uh if you at all you know allow us to do that um uh, apart from that michael because we are talking about markets out here so um how long you have been in market i first started investigating strategies in the early 90s okay. and like a lot of people and a lot of people i started to look at the fundamentals and i thought to myself well i don't have the background for this i'm never going to be the next warren buffett this just did it I I didn't I didn't I didn't have the aptitude for that. Mm-hmm. But at that same at that same time I found out about another strategy that was not talked about and this strategy was called trend following. Mm-hmm. And it was it was kind of, I, I don't want to use the word secret but in a way it was secret because there was a kind of an underground network of people that were trading this strategy. Mm-hmm. And the cool thing about it was you did not have to be Warren Buffett you did right. not have to know that you did not have to know the fundamentals all you needed to know was the price if you had the price you could trade so in simple terms if somebody can imagine being a uh, on an a desolate island somewhere in the indian ocean right you know you're you're there all you you're you've got nothing no information the only thing you get is price data every day if you had a group of markets and if you had only price data Mm-hmm. could you trade those markets and make profits only with the price data and that was my introduction to the markets in the early 1990s that's interesting so michael i'm uh, glad that you brought this up because you know uh, warren buffett as a as a internet sensation and as someone everyone who aspired to become but then you uh, decided that no that is not something which i want to do because i don't have that aptitude to do that now can you elaborate that that what's the aptitude required to become a person like warren buffett which you believe that you don't have it well i should clarify i don't think i'm any less intelligent than next than the next person I, when i say aptitude what i really mean is that you have to take in all of this data yeah. all this fundamental data and supposedly once you take in this fundamental data you then will reduce the data to a decision making framework and from that decision making framework you will then buy and you will sell. And so this didn't make sense to me. So I I start to look deeper I'm like well is this exactly you know is Warren Buffett the master of the fundamentals or is Warren Buffett the master of making big bets on big companies and doing it before almost anybody else. Mm-hmm. And so I thought that was it I was like I said to myself well, how how many Warren Buffetts are there? Well, there's mm. only one. There's only mm. one. Mm. But I started looking around the trend following world and there were more trend following traders and they weren't connected. And so it struck me, you know, Warren Buffett is obviously a very successful, very smart guy, mm-hmm. but you have but you have to start to think about luck. 
how much did luck play a role in Warren Buffett? Because there's not a lot of other Warren Buffetts. Mm. But with, with trend following, I started to see all these different trend following players around the world using similar strategies. So I thought to myself, that's a, that's a better direction for me. Okay. So I, I mean, but I'm sure there's some aptitude aspect there too. I mean, I do not understand the market fundamentals like Warren Buffett. But then again, many of the greatest trend following traders in the world that have become billionaires in their own right, they yeah. don't understand the fun, they don't understand the fundamentals either. True, true. <laughs> so Michael, I mean, when so many people ultimately follow a same system, say a trend following system, then obviously not everyone can make huge money, right? I mean, Warren Buffett is different because he does certain things different with other people are not doing. But trend following apparently looks very simple. And if everyone is doing the same thing, how will you generate extra alpha out of it? Well, your question there is really about human psychology, human ambition. How many people really want to be an entrepreneur? Mm. How many people really want to do something different than their neighbor? Last I, last I checked in America, most people want to live in the same house as their neighbor, working the same job as their neighbor, the same hours as their neighbor. So I don't care whether it's Warren Buffett or trend following. Most people do not want to do something that might require effort, is hard, and takes time. Most people are going to say, well, you know, let me go work for the man. Let me get a job. Let me buy and hold. So I don't think the risk of what you uh, say is really there. Because most people, most people are just looking to be like their neighbor. Right, right. <clears throat> let me rephrase my question. Uh, let me you know, put it in a very different way. So a same trend following strategy, how do one create a differentiation for oneself to generate an extra alpha over, over other people? How do they? Well, okay. First off, let's just think about markets. Yeah. How many, how many markets are there around the world? How many big liquid markets? You have, you have stocks, you have a interest rates, you have currencies, you have metals, you have commodities. Well, there's corn, there's wheat, there's palladium, there's gold, there's equities. There's only so many big liquid markets to follow, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you can say, well, I only want to trade stocks. Okay, if you only want to trade stocks, then I would ask that person, what's the correlation between all these equities? And so if you're following all these equities, are you really just following the same equity? Mm. So I, I don't see the risk that you're driving at. I know the point you're driving at, but another way to think about this too is, okay, I, I, I lay this scenario out that we have all these markets that one can follow. What risk are you going to take? Not everybody's going to take the same risk. Yeah. Are, are, are you going to risk 1% per trade, 2%, 3%? What risk are you going to take? And not everybody's going to trade and track the exact same markets. Yeah. So you're in, not everybody's going to have the same time length, you know. Now I do. I I never recommend anybody to mess around with day trading; just a waste of time. But you know, are you going to trade as a, a much longer term trend following trader or a shorter term? So if you look at trade length, if you look at risk management, how much you risk, and you look at the markets that you can potentially choose from, that's going to that's going to that's going to end up with a lot of variability, a lot of variability. Okay. Um, I, I, but I think what you're really driving at is if people become a trend following trader and they have the same system, are they looking at the same signals and they're all doing the exact same thing at the exact same time? And then that's not, that's not, that's not an issue. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so price has the power of having variability and different people can do different things because everyone have their own risk management and, and risk appetite as well, where some people would be are okay with making four or five percent. Some people really want to make 30, 40 percent. So there is room for everyone to generate the wealth which they want yeah. to make, right? That's Absol fair. absolutely absolutely. That's fair. So, Michael, when you uh, look at the market holistically, uh, trend following system, then you look at multi asset, right? Or you are only or you would you recommend person to only focus on one instrument and just be there in that instrument forever and trade that instrument? You mean instrument or market? Uh, let's talk about market first and then I'll get into instrument. Yeah. I, if you trade only one market alone, you can't be a trend following trader. Oh, okay. Where, I mean, cause if you think about it, the year starts, the, the year is uh, 2022 and you start the year off. 
and you're tracking a diverse group of markets. Yeah. But you don't know which one of those markets might trend as the year starts. But you have to have enough. You have to be tracking enough that you have options. So all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I did not plan that crude oil would be a great trade in 2022, mm. but it was. So if you're only trading one market, then where was the chance for you to participate in crude oil if crude oil was not your own, only one market? Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you can't do it. So if you want to trade one market alone, I just recommend people uh, stop thinking about trading, stop thinking about investing, uh, put your money into a buy and hold uh, portfolio, go buy Warren Buffett, whatever, go buy a trend following trader, but don't think about it. Don't try to do it because you, you can't do it on one market alone. Sure, sure. Got your point. Um, and uh, suppose if someone wants to focus on only one instrument because not everyone is full time into the market, uh, probably people are giving, say, 10 hours or 15 hours a week. Then if suppose one want to get into only one market, but multiple instruments, for example, equity. In India, equity market has more than uh, 2,000 uh, stocks and one can do a selection on, on the basket of stocks where one would like to trade. Would you recommend someone with a limited time uh, per week to do that? Well, what's the correlation of these stocks? So for example, if you're going to trade, stocks are typically very highly correlated. Yeah. So if you if you choose, I don't care what country, but let's say you choose 10 Indian tech stocks. Yeah. And I, I don't even know the names of these Indian tech stocks, but let's say you choose 10 Indian tech stocks. And then you crunch the math on it, you realize they're highly correlated, meaning they all go up and down at a very high degree of uh, the same. So where's your diversification? <laughs> it's like trading, if you trade 10 markets that are highly correlated, it's like trading one market. So I, I don't, that's where people need to break with this thinking here that I guess the premise that you, also the premise that you laid out, you know, I, I only have this much time or I only have this or I only have that. Well, that's your problem. <laughs> that's not the market's problem. The market doesn't care about your problem. The markets are going to do what the markets are going to do, regardless of what you're going to do. You can't, just say, well, I, I only want to spend uh, one minute per day understanding something, whatever it is. Well, then you're never going to understand it. I want to be a great painter and I want to practice one minute a day. That's all the time I have. Well, you're never going to be a great painter. You're going to suck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. You're, you're going to be terrible. So, I mean, I, I think some of these ways people have allowed themselves to think, uh, you know, I only have so much time. Then don't do this. Just put your money with somebody and stop. That's interesting. Uh, when we are following multiple markets, uh, trend following, obviously some markets will be uptrending, some markets will be downtrending. I will discuss with you how to identify the uptrend and downtrend. But before that, this question. So a typical trend following trader would go long short, like buy the uptrending as well as go short in the downtrending, or one can do only long only and only focus when there is uptrend in one particular instrument. I think historically, it's been long, short, historically. I do know some traders that have developed trend-following funds where they look at commodity markets, which there's a lot of diversification in commodity markets, but they look at commodity markets from the long-only side. So, But that, that's a little more rare. I just don't want to be so dogmatic about it to say that it's impossible because I know people that do do it. Uh, historically, though, uh, you you should be open to both the long and the short. Sure. Now let me get to that principal question. How do you identify the uptrend and downtrend? Is it only the price behavior or you also add uh, some indicators as a confirmation of the trend? Well, the three, the three best indicators are, if you were to say the three best indicators, they'd probably be different than my three best indicators. The three best indicators are price price and price i knew so i, knew this I don't is know, i don't know i don't i don't know what the other indicators are i mean i mean look at that candlestick it's moving it's undulating it turned to color oh my gosh the candlestick turned to color that means tomorrow the sun's gonna come up i mean <laughs> it's it's trend following is not that you know and i i really i if i was to push anything on anybody i would say Walk away from any strategy that purports to tell you what will happen tomorrow. 
It's just a waste of time. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Trend following is not trend following is not that. Trend following is momentum. Trend following is saying, let's jump on board the trend a little late and let's go with it as far as it goes to the top. And then when it starts to come down, we get out. So trend following is always getting in late and getting out late. Oh. And what what you're going for is the middle meat of a trend. You can't pick the bottom, you can't pick the top, you get the middle. Now, I'm reading your eyes right now and I'm I'm thinking, well, you might have some disagreements with me. You might have some alternate strategies you're imagining and maybe other people listening are having alternate strategies. And that's fine. Because what what you should do to yourself is is prove my words. Don't just trust me. And I, I've done this in my books. The foundation for my books was not just Mike saying, well, you know, I've got an opinion about this trend following. And no, no, no. I went ahead and I said, who was doing this before I was born, right? Who was, who's been doing this for decades? And I found their track records. And their track records gave so much information. Track records you would not typically find on CNBC or Bloomberg or whatever, but so much information in these track records. And I'm talking about people not connected, different countries, and that information told me something. First, it was proof of concept. It was big time proof of concept. And so then you start to say to yourself, well, if I'm going to look at trend following and I'm going to hold a microscope up in a you know, a magnifying glass, and I'm going to look at all these details, and I want to see the performance data of all the masters that have come before us. Well, then I challenge you, I challenge anybody, go find the same data for all these other strategies that you hear about. Now, I'll give you the shortcut. The shortcut is you're not probably going to find that data. And, and that, that leaves you with an interesting, you, anybody, it leaves anybody with an interesting conundrum. Because like, okay, this guy, Mike, he's saying trend following works. Here's some performance data that backs his words. But I, I think this other strategy works. But I don't have any performance data for it. Or I traded it for a week or a month or something, and I saw something that looks good. I don't have to tell, I don't really have to beat, the, beat you with a hammer to explain what I'm explaining. Yeah, yeah, I got it. So let me ask you the most principal question of this discussion, how to identify trend? You think that's the most important part? <laughs> the, the principal question. <laughs> Obviously, there may be other important questions around it, but this is a why is that why is, why is that the principal one? Because ultimately, the mother of uh, you know all market participation is you want to know when the trend has emerged, right? I mean, as you said that we are not the one who can initiate the trend. Neither we will terminate the trend. It's the big guys who will do that. But we have to so kind my, of... My friend Larry Height, uh, one of the guys that was profiled in Jack Schwager's Market Wizards book, mm -hmm. he, uh, he told me uh, years ago that they, they started investigating this idea because so many people think that the principal issue is the entry. And so Larry sat down with his traders and his programmers and he said... I want us to use our normal exit rules. I want us to use our normal risk management. I want us to use our normal portfolio selection. But I want our entry rules to be entirely random, random length trend following rules. Wow. It made a lot of money, but they couldn't use it because they couldn't tell their clients that it was a random entry system because yeah. clients would think that clients would think that was crazy. But but the powers that be so to speak, the traders in the know know that entry is, you know, just one piece of the puzzle. Yeah, you've got to get into the market. You've got to make an entry. But I would say to you, are you going to make an entry without knowing your exit? No, you've got to, you've got to enter knowing your exit before you ever enter. Or you're gambling. I mean, you might as well just go to Vegas or go to Macau and have fun. Okay. So, okay, you know, let's talk about it. You're, like, you're yes. like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are giving a very, very interesting perspective to me. So let's talk about both entry and exit. So say when you when you see that the trend following has started, then you enter, right? And the exit is based on the entry price 
or the exit could also be based on the new trend which is emerging uh, maybe downtrend or the uptrend depending upon your position the exit is based on what the price does so okay. typically typically when you enter a trend following trade you're going to have two forms of exit you're going to have an exit when do you exit with a profit and when do you exit with a loss mm -hmm. now when i'm talking about this trend following people should keep in mind something basically here if you take if you take entries, mm -hmm. what, what winning percentage are you expecting when you enter a trade, right? You know, some, pe some people will say, oh, you know, I, I, I have a, a trading system and I have 90% winners. And I think, oh, are you Bernie Madoff? What would be <laughs> you 90% 90, 90 winners? So, you know, trend following typically has 40% winners, but the winners are typically three times bigger than the losers. Okay. So if you have 60% losers, means that means you know a momentum signal happens you get in you enter but then the market goes against you you got a loss you get out okay. so you get a lot you get a lot of small losses and then you get the big trend like the crude oil trend yeah. that's how this works that's how this works okay so when you enter that means you know exactly your exit points uh, be it stop loss or take profit both right exactly Okay. And typically the risk reward ratio is at least three is to one. I mean, you want so, to make three times. There's going to be some variability, but it's, that's, the, that's the philosophical thinking. Sure, sure. Uh, the, the classic methods of identifying trends are those lines, right? Where you are connecting the low points or the high points. Uh, so would you also resort to the same methods of connecting the uh, dots, like the trend line, uptrend line, downtrend line, or the horizontal lines? I, I think there's a better use for the books that have these uh, these these lines that you connect dots. Maybe those those books would be good good kindling for a nice fire in the winter time to keep you warm. Uh, so no, I mean I, I, because what you're getting into, and I talk about this in I talk about this in my first book, Trend Following, wow. is there's there's two forms of technical analysis. There's predictive and there's reactive. Predictive is going to be kind of what you're talking about with the trend lines or if somebody said candlesticks or head and shoulders or, or this pattern or this squiggly line. And if I follow this, um, then this will predict something to tomorrow. Yeah. That, that's not trend following. That's not trend following. So trend following is more like the price is moving. We're taking, we're taking action. The price changes, it goes a different direction. We're taking action. Two forms of predict, two forms of technical analysis, one prediction, one reaction. There's very little proof about the prediction form of it, except hundreds of books on Amazon that you can buy that yeah. tell you about it. But but it, I, I've I've not yet to find all of these, like I mentioned, the uh the, the professional trend following traders where you can see their track records. I've yet to find that for the predictive technical analysis. Okay, interesting. Can you elaborate this further? Uh, the, uh, the predictive one, can you elaborate this further? I don't, I don't do it. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I don't, it's, <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it, I, to me, it's focus focus. It's, I mean, because here's the problem. Trend following is following the price. Mm -hmm. Te predictive technical analysis is trying to use something on a chart yeah. to predict to predict tomorrow. So you're no longer you're no longer following the market. You're 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 making a bet on something that this pattern will give you tomorrow. It's a very different way of thinking. Yeah. yeah. They're, 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 all, they're almost not related, even though they get, they get grouped together, they're not related. Right. So how do you then judge the reactivity of the price? Uh, just by looking at the price, you, I mean, you don't plot any line or any, any tool. I mean, just by looking <laughs> what, what, at the price. What, 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 what am I going to, what am I plotting? I mean, <clears throat> for example, <clears throat> the, <clears throat> sorry, if the, uh, if the price is going up, you're long. So if, if, if the price for whatever market, and anybody out there can imagine whatever Indian market, market they're imagining, but if the price is at level 100 and you get in, 
and it goes to 200 and it goes to 300, are you getting out at 300? What if it goes to 400? Meaning you don't get out till it goes against you. So you're, you, there's no profit targets here. Okay. That's a, that's a big part of the predictive side of it, which is there's this kind of predicting profits where trend following is just like, hey, we're going to take what the markets give us. Sure. But we all know that you know price doesn't move in a linear fashion. So it will go up, it will correct, and then it will initiate one more swing. So when the price corrects, will how will we decide that it's the termination of that trend or it's a continuation of the previous trend? Or you will say that no, every new, every uptrend is one trend and then a correction is just an opportunity to get into another round of trend. Which is if, you, if you get an exit signal, you exit. So that's, I mean, I'm just trying to get in that only that, how do you get that exit, exit signal? Because you are not well, using well, any pattern. Let's get back, let, let's, let's get back to the beginning of just yeah. a, a, base, a, basic, uh, a basic indicator for getting into a trend following entry. Let's say the market makes a new 100 day high. Okay. Enter, okay. you're long, you're now long, you're long. Okay. Now what? Now you wait. <laughs> nothing you could do. <laughs> no trend lines to draw. No, nothing you could do. You just wait. Now, if that you get it at level 100, if the market volatility, whatever, goes against you and it drops to 90, let's assume that hit your, your that hit your exit signal, one of your exit signals, right? So now you've got a 10% loss. But let's say the market doesn't hit the 90 and it keeps going up, goes up to 200. But then it goes, you know, then it then it reaches uh it reaches its high point and it starts to come down. Yeah. A 20 day low. So, you know, if you look at something, you say, well, I want to have an entry signal of, let's say, a, a 100 day breakout. You can have an exit signal of a 20 day breakout in the opposite direction. Okay. You're simply looking at momentum. You're not, and you, again, you've got to look at it across markets. One market, it's not going to work. Interesting. <clears throat> so ultimately, it's a two-dimension matrix, right? There is a price and there is a time. So you have decided 120. is That cannot be a random number, right? So you must have done your backtesting and came out with well, a number that... Well, well it, can be a, it can be a random number. I just gave the example of the random number story. I mean, yes, it makes, it makes sense to have a systematic approach. Yeah. You know, you don't want to just you don't want to be just sitting there, but my my kind of delicate nuanced uh point was that these you know, you you want to be getting in on higher highs, right? Yeah. Going short on lower lows. That's the that's the counterintuitive part, right? All right. But now of course, once you select your portfolio, your portfolio you're going to track. Then you have your entry signals, you have your exit signals. You know your risk management. You're about one percent, two percent, whatever. That's pretty rigid. You don't want to start changing that all the time, right? Uh, but then again, like I said, the random entry can work. All right. So I'll, I'll just give you one example, and uh, you know, correct me wherever I'm going wrong. So, 52 week high is a most followed price uh, indicator, or or I mean, you can say the price point. That whenever a stock is crossing 52 week high, that means there is a buildup of momentum. So one should enter. And different people have different ways of identifying stop loss and take profit. So what you are saying that it could be as simple as that 52 week high or a 100 day high or whatever number. You need not actually see the chart. The data itself can give you an indication rather than looking at the technical chart, right? Correct. Got it. I, I made I made this I made the example very early on. I said that. The desert island. Let's yeah. imagine you're on. Let's imagine you're on the desert island, and all you have are the closing prices for the thirty most liquid markets in the world. You don't have a chart. You don't have anything. All you've got is like a you know a little ticker that says you know Monday closing price, Tuesday closing price. You got five closing prices per week. Can you use that information to trade? So you know, I remember when I was very young, and I used to go to pit trading with my father. And these guys used to write down the price in a pad and make prediction of the market uh, for next year, day after, just looking at the prices from the pad. That time, they didn't have the fancy softwares. 
they used to plot it in a graph but that was always the end of the day homework just to store the database but i totally resonate to what you said that the most primitive way of trading financial assets have been only read the tape you know uh, just read the price and predict with the price well the example with your father though also we should clarify very few people back in the day that would have been pit traders they were scalpers yeah yeah they were they weren't trend following traders they were following the momentum on a very short term basis yeah to make money and they they had they had a they had knowledge of what the order flow was from the big traders and stuff like that yeah. but they they were they were not trend following traders sure sure point taken so let's talk about a bit of you know multiple durations of trade and there is a concept for multi time analysis where some people uh, they make a view about that uh, asset uh, over a longer time frame say for example looking at price behavior on a weekly basis and trade on the basis of daily price action so this multi time frame analysis do you uh, do you believe in this thought you can have multiple systems so you could say to yourself i want to have a trend following system that's trading at this breakout length and this breakout length and i guess there could be some basis i mean you'd have to be able to code it you'd have to put it into excel you know so uh, i'm i'm not sure i'm not sure if if there's something predictive in the idea that if you're trading trend following on a closing price basis but then i'm going to have a weekly trend following system that's going to help me to predict some part of the daily i i it's it's worth investigating i guess i'm i'm not sure why it would be needed let me rephrase the question say for example i i am looking at weekly time frame and there i can see an uptrend but on the daily time frame well, what's, still... what's 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 an uptrend remember okay. trend following trend following is like hey we're taking an entry we don't know what's going to happen after look you know when you when you make an entry you don't know what's going to happen here you don't have to go up or down you don't know but we know what has happened last week right yeah but you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow <laughs> that's fair so right. say so, for so example so when... this week it made a new high i mean higher than the previous week so that's an uptrend can we use that uh, to define an uptrend why do we have to define it as anything you're you're now long I mean you know because so, you I mean you're you're long. I mean I I don't I I cuz I get concerned is that the word uptrend could be used in a way that I'm not understanding exactly how other people or other groups are using it. I would just say, you know, you got your entry, you're long. Uh I want to go one step before and I'm saying that I have not yet decided whether I'm long or short. Now I want to initiate a trade. So do i really think whether it's an uptrend or downtrend in the market right now you're just you're getting in on momentum so you're getting in on a higher high or a lower low which is if there is a higher high it's an uptrend right no not necessarily not necessarily oh because you could take that entry and you could get out the next day you could take that entry and you could get stopped out the next day or the next week or whatever so i i don't know that you can really you you can define Here's the part that's really tricky about trend following. It's really difficult to find a trend until it's over. Yeah. So, I, the idea that, you know, people say to me, "Well, how do I jump onto a trend?" Well, I'd say, "Well, hold on. What portfolio are you tracking? What's your money management? When do you enter? When do you exit with a gain? When do you exit with a loss?" I'd be asking those five questions mm -hmm. versus trying to uh determine whether something is in an uptrend or a downtrend. It seems 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 like maybe it's not worth the effort. It seems like it's better just to have price rules, use those rules and let everybody on CNBC talk about uh whether something is uh going to happen tomorrow or the death cross has happened, therefore the world will end tomorrow, all these things that we hear about. Sure. I got your point uh I point well taken actually that we should not have qualifiers like uptrend and downtrend. when we are taking positions or when we are carrying the positions otherwise it adds to the biasness of our trades so i i i got your point but let me come back to the multi time frame analysis so say on a weekly basis i'm looking at weekly chart well, why why do you, why do you want to do this let me ask that let me cuz i want to make sure i understand where you're trying to go why do you want to have this multi analysis why uh because um, you know uh 
so i want to have a two layer of decision making for myself one layer is more broader which says that overall from a longer duration perspective what's the market say and then i want to execute what, 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 what do you what, what what do you mean what the market why 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 can't you execute on the time frame that you're trading that's the part that i mean maybe we're saying the same thing in a different way i'm not sure yeah. Uh, yeah. you know i mean because if 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 the market is all of a sudden making a new 100 day high so that's going to look you know the market has the market could be flat right okay you got to think about that too markets can be going up and make a high or markets can be going flat and make a high yeah. right so they yeah. it could come out of it could come out of a flat period or a trending period i just am a little concerned about uh make sure i understand how the 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 multi time frames are are helping you because ultimately from a trend following perspective you have to code that Okay. you have to write you have to write that to rules it can't just be that i'm you know looking at the cloud formation so to speak and then i'm going to my then i'm going back to to my trading time frame i i would say that has to be written down very very tightly i can clearly see that you are not a great fan of charts and your technical analysis in that way uh, you believe no, more in numbers I, Well, uh, yeah, honestly, I think most of can I can I say one bad word? I think most yeah. of technical most of technical analysis is 100% bullshit. Um it, and I I it is. And back to my point, I challenge I would challenge you, I would challenge your listeners follow my exercise. Okay, I come I come across trend following. Wow, this is really interesting. I wonder if it works completely like it sounds like it works. and then you find the performance track records of all the people that came before me and you see wow they often make money in the same months and they lose money in the same months now i can see they're using different leverage but then i thought said to myself well this is really interesting i i like the idea of this trend following and now look at all this proof whereas and the 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 traditional technical analysis world people say well I, just like me i like all this technical analysis it where's the proof the only proof i've ever heard from the traditional technical analysis is the individual himself or herself talking about their performance which you know there's i'm not seeing something that's audited by the US government. I'm not audited. It's audited and on file with the US government. This has got to be the process. It, it, this is my process. If you if you, I mean maybe some people want it to be a little more loosey goosey and they just want to kind of believe that they're in their house and they figured out something magical and nobody else knows about it. I don't think the world works that way. I don't think there's a lot of new things in the world, so I think it's better to uh find things that work really well find people that have done things before us uh that's not to say there can't be innovation i thought i thought some of the some of the traders that jack schwager found in his newest book it was called unknown market wizards were some very interesting strategies i'm sure across crypto there's been some you know crypto's a little it's not exactly uh highly regulated liquid markets but I'm sure there's been some innovative strategies but I would challenge people just to say it one more time I challenge people in the traditional technical analysis find some proof that this actually works beyond yourself Interesting so you know let me start with a b c d so if suppose you have to recommend someone to start the way you are thinking so what should be the first step of getting into the market but how how should I observe because the most basic thing people do first is to look at the charts and you are saying that don't look at the chart the why, why do they, they well, i asked you why do they look at the charts because chart has this inherent uh, ability to pull people towards itself right how what why i don't understand i think maybe because of the glamour question i think maybe because of the structure which gives a more clearer picture about the market because of the history but but why should we accept that it's actually an accurate way to do things when i don't know of performance track records over the decades 
of people that quote, just use charts. Like if they're just using charts at some stage of the game, they have to know, okay, here's the chart. I will enter every chart at this point. I will exit at this point. I will bet this much. I will trade these markets. You still have to have rules. Yep. So ultimately the rules have to be based on something. And like, if you're figuring out your risk management, it's all going to be based on price. It's going to be based on, that's the, that's, that's reducing everything to its bare essence. Got it. So I just keep, I just keep pushing you on the, on some of the terminology. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. I can understand what you're doing, but I'm glad someone is doing that. Uh, so let me also get back to my core question that how do one start? I mean, suppose you are saying that start observing the price. So is trading terminal the best place to start observing the price? Should I write down the price every periodically? And one more question is, is intraday open high, low close matters or only the closing price of the day matters? <laughs> there is a basic trend following system in my book, uh, The Complete Turtle Trader. I think people should take a look at some trend following systems first. There is, there's five basic issues that you have to have figured out to be a trend following trader. Mm -hmm. First, what group of markets am I going to track and follow, right? Okay. Probably a, probably a minimum of 20, right? Okay. Then you, have, then you have to say to yourself, what's going to be my risk? How much am I going to risk on each trade? What am I comfortable with in terms of, of that? You know, how, much, how much can I potentially win? How much can I potentially lose? You have to know what's your entry signal. You have to know what your two exit signals are with a loss or with a gain. Okay. That's, that's how you start. Just pulling up and looking at a chart. Okay. I, I remember David Harding, who's one of the most famous trend following traders. He said very early on in his life, maybe the late seventies, early eighties, late early eighties, I think he did this very exercise. He looked at charts and charts and charts, and he was trying to figure out what, what was the, the commonality. Ultimately, he built from all of that exercise a trend-following system, which is very much like what I'm talking about today. Now, what's the difference, though, between David Harding in the early 1980s and someone listening now? Well, you already know. He didn't know about trend-following. He didn't know it existed. But you, you know it exists. I know it exists. There's a lot of books about it. So I think that's, that's the part that people, it's almost like the exercise should be this. Here's my traditional technical analysis book. Here's a trend following book. Now, compare them. Compare them. What, what's the difference? One is a lot of theory and a lot of philosophy without a lot of results. The other has philosophy and theory, but results. That's, that's, that's an important way to think. All right. Uh, so uh, I'm presuming that in your books, uh, there won't be charts, right? Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's useful to show a chart in the sense of like, okay, uh, you know, there was, a, there was a time period in the early 1990s where this one German metal company blew up and it was trading oil. It was a German yeah. oil company. It was trading oil. So it, it was, it's useful in the sense that Historically, when people start to wonder, where did all those trend following profits come from? Well, it's useful to share a chart yeah. that if you, if you know that trend following traders just made massive profits, then you can share a crude oil chart that shows where those profits came from. That's useful. Sure. But sure. It's, it's, it's more just a historical artifact to share with somebody, here's what happened. It's not an artifact that you can use in real time. So, Michael, I'm going to you know, share my screen and show you Nifty chart. Nifty is the benchmark index of Indian market. And uh, I have a few questions uh, from you, uh, for you uh, with respect to that chart. So, let me, this is a screen share of my template. You know, I'm a technical analysis follower, so please pardon me for these complicated charts. Yeah, you got to be going crazy, going crazy with me today, huh? You'll have to tell your audience. You have to tell your audience. Oh my God, I've just brought somebody on who wants to rip everything I'm doing. Terrible. <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm absolutely fine. I like different perspectives, so it's okay. So let me just draw an intraday chart of Nifty. 
So just intraday, intra, intraday. No, no, I'll just convert this into a ROI. I'll convert this into a daily chart. Okay, and uh, this is Nifty daily chart. Okay. Now, you know, when I'm looking at technicals, I can clearly visualize a trend because you know, the look and the feel of chart with two dimension gives me that perspective as there is a trend which is uptrend. And I'm really liking your perspective that do not try to predict the future that the uptrend may continue. But then if suppose I'm here today, uh, so market is open right now, and this is where market is trading. Uh, this is a daily chart. So now what do I do from here? What should be my baby step? Is this the highest high of some time period? I mean, it, oh. it, is, it, it looks like maybe it's, I'm trying to, I'm trying to read in there. I can't see the, the dates at the bottom, but is it like a new uh, 50 or 55 day or so breakout? What, what kind of length is that? It's, it looks like a higher high because you're, you're, you're back here. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it could very well be a long entry from a trend bond perspective, but that doesn't mean anything in the sense that you take the entry and you could be stopped out tomorrow. Sure. So let me just convert this into a line chart and I, I'll, I'll go by that logic. So this is the closing price every day. And this suppose uh, this is 15th of Feb, uh, price high, uh, close. And today we are 21st of March. So, so this price, which is 17,360. So with the trend following logic, uh, what I understood from you is that if it is crossing this, then that's of interest to me, right? Yeah, you're, you're, you're getting to a higher point. Yeah, you're, you're breaking out to a higher high. So when I enter this, I will have a stop loss in mind, which could be, right. and what should be the basis of the stop loss? The entry price. The entry price, okay. And my target should be, I will not look at these levels. I will just write this price because it's already crossed that 55 period, assuming that it's a 55 period cross. Right. So my that, take that's, yeah. So when will I take profit? Will I keep on trailing it or I will have a fixed the price base take profit? No, I, I said it earlier, no profit targets. Okay, there is no profit target. So I keep on. So this stop loss will remain the, the stop loss. And two stop uh, losses. The, two, two stop losses, remember? Okay. So one will be the original stop loss and the other one would be? The one when you, when you reach a peak and it comes down from the peak. Oh, okay. You're, look, you're looking for the middle of the trend. When it's all said and done in a perfect world, that's what you end up with. But yeah, at this point with where you've got your blinking cursor right now, let's just assume, you know, without being trying to be too particular here, let's assume that's a new high, high highest high. So now okay. you, take a long, you take a long signal there. Yeah. That's it. That's it. No more analysis. Can't do anything. Just got to wait. That's it. Just got to wait. Get all that information before you, behind you. It's, okay. not, it's, not part of, it's not part of the equation now. So I will not be bothered with these levels which were achieved earlier to figure out whether there is not, any not, resistance. Not, no, no, no. Not, once you've taken, once you've decided this new blinking cursor, if yeah. that, let's, assu let's assume that is a, a highest high. You're now taking an entry. You're now long. Uh, this information back at the beginning of 2022 is not relevant. Okay, okay. I think that's the difference, core difference between technicals and the price. Uh, what uh, the trend following is that technicals pays a lot of attention value to these, whereas uh, what you are saying in trend following, these are not relevant anymore once you have entered the, at a price point. Well, all, all that prior data, if you've already entered, all that prior data can only be useful to you if you're assuming that prior data is going to predict where the entry that you just got in at is going to go. So we're, we're assuming that this is a new higher high. We're assuming you've made an entry. Okay, that's the trend following way. Then you wait to see what happens. You're either going to go until your profit stop gets hit or your, 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 your exit stop gets hit. But all that information in the prior, uh, the prior periods a couple months ago, I, I don't know what that information could be useful. For. It's not useful in the trend following perspective at all. Okay. Um, I, I'm not sure how it could be useful in any perspective because it's, it's just ultimately, you're going to tell me 
that now that you've made this new entry, we've got this new momentum signal that that prior data from months ago is going to predict the duration of a, of a potential trend. Yeah. How, yeah, that's that. I would run from that. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I, sure. Would run, I, I would run really fast. <laughs> I got your point. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, one last question on this, this chart. So say this, this was a point when I, I thought that this is crossing this high. So I'll enter here. But once I entered, the price went down and my stop loss got hit. Okay. Yeah. Now the well, next if it time. It, 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 if it makes a new higher high again, then you get back in. Oh, and that higher high should be again high of this or high of this? Well, you've got to have a rule here. We've got to have a consistent okay. rule, a okay. consistent a consistent momentum rule that we're getting in at. But yeah, the, the, you very, this is called uh, whipsaws, right? Uh, yeah. The whipsaw is you, you get in, up, you get stopped out. You get in, you get stopped out. And, and so sometimes people say to me, they say, well, why can you have big loss? Why can you have big drawdowns in trend following? You yeah. say, well, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense because you've got a tight stop loss. So then you can get out. Why, why, are, you, why are you losing 20 or 30%? Well, you're not losing that on one. It's all the small losses and trendless periods that are adding up to a bigger loss. I got your point. I think real life chart makes it so simple. But at least uh, now I know how much weightage I have to give to the chart and how much I have to give to the price. But it was so much clear to me. Thank you so much for clarifying this uh, by looking at Nifty chart. And I'm very curious to read your book now. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to read your book, but uh, I think it's a very, very different perspective. I, I will read it and I'll definitely recommend my learners to read this as well. Six, six books. Wow. So which one should we start with? <laughs> Show me all six. Uh, which one should we start well, with? I, I've only got what I've got. I've got, uh, I've got three here. This is probably my most popular, most uh, famous one. Yeah. Uh, this is a new one that came out last year with Tom Basso. Okay. Uh, and then this is the beast. 220,000 words. Everything I'm saying here today, plus a lot more. Sure. So we'll start with that book then. I, you know, I, I don't know what I, I wrote them all. So I don't know. Read them all. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so there is no sequencing. It's, it's, you can yeah. start from anywhere. Right. Yeah. 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 For sure. Right. Great. Fantastic. Michael, it was such a pleasure talking to you. I mean, you are very different and you definitely uh, gave a new insight to me. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for your time. Sorry if I beat you up too much, but it was fun. It was fun for me. I like this way. So thank you so much. And uh, uh, hopefully someday I will be able to host you in India and we'll play cricket together. Thank you. Thank you. 